Hello my scrappy peeps, it's Cheyenne the Pixie Crafter and today we are going to be working in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to show you how I go about designing my scrapbook layouts and my die cuts in Cricut Design Space. So go ahead and open up the program that you have on your laptop or desktop. You might be able to do it on your iPad. I don't have an iPad. I don't know how that interface is, but you do need access to the, the templates button. Well, you don't have to, but that's the way I do it. And that's how I prefer to do it. So that's how I'm showing you. Okay, so you've got a new canvas. It's blank and ready for creativity and inspiration. Oh, I go over here to the templates um, button and it's going to come up with so many different templates that you can use as a guide to um, what you're designing. So you can get some sort of spatial understanding. You guys can't see it, but I'm actually like using my hands as if I'm filming a video that you can see me in. I should probably stop gesturing because it's not really getting the job done. All right, so you can search by your canvas type. You can scroll through everything. You can type what you're looking for in the search bar and that will come up. So we need the scrapbook layouts. So these are just templates. They're for reference only. Will not be saved with your project. They will not print. They will not cut. They are just there to give you an idea of what's going on. All right, so I've zoomed out so we can see the whole 12 by 12. Now, if you come down over here, you have um, the option to kind of do some work with your template. So you can go ahead and uh, select the I button, and then you don't see it no more. It's gone. It's gone. You can also come up here and work with a single or a double page layout. So that's nice. Um, and then you can even customize the size of your scrapbook page. Now if we come back down over here and click on it, you can also change the color. You can keep it the standard little pearl gray color that it comes up as, or if you know that you're gonna be working with a certain background color, you can go ahead and change that. I know I'm working with a cream background, and I'm going to do some mixed media stuff to it. So I want to have that kind of going and set. Now here, if you have a hex number, you can go ahead and type the hex number in that you want. You can play around with this little selector as well and get a lot of different colors. And this is true whenever you have this, um, the color or pattern uh, menu up. I don't know that menu is the right word for it, but you know what? I'm going with it. I'm trying to do this all in one take, so there might be flub ups, and I'm just going to keep it. All right, so we've got our background template, our 12 by 12 piece of imaginary cardstock. Now, next thing I like to do is come over here and select a square. I'm going to come up here to the toolbar. I'm going to unclick this little lock here so that I can correct the aspect ratio for this box to match the size of my photo. I've only got one photo today and it's approximately 3.75 by 4 so I've got that going. And I know it's going to be somewhere around here. So now I've got that all set up. Those are all of the the basics that I feel you need before you start designing. Now it's time to bring in some images. So we're going to click on the images button. Now there's several different ways for you to search for your images. So this little tab here, this is how it comes up first. This is the entire image library. You can scroll through this for days and still not see them all. So I suggest if you're going to use the image library, you also use the search bar to limit your options. Um, so let's say I am looking for karate. So that'll bring up everything that has been tagged with the word karate. All right. It's not what I'm looking for, so we're going to go back. All right, all of the images. Now, they do tend to have the newest images first. So here you see a lot of love and hearts and very Valentine's Day themed images because that's the newest stuff. That's what's going to show up. All right. 
you also have the option of searching by category. So if you click on the category button, you've got all of these different categories that you can choose from. So nature, everything that has that nature tag is going to pop up for you. Maybe you want some St. Patrick's Day. That's going to pop up for you. So you can also search down here by the brands. Now I find that these ones you tend to have to purchase. It's not very often that the brands end up in Cricut Access. And for those of you that don't know, Cricut Access is a monthly subscription that allows you to have access to lots of different images. There are a couple different um, setups that you can choose, different memberships and subscriptions within Cricut Access. There's one that's just fonts. There's, um, you know, the full-on job. You can pay by month. You can pay by year. It's up to you. So I just like that they're trying to make it easy for you to find the image that you want. They also do free this week images from time to time. I don't, yes, yeah, so here are all of the images that are free this week. So that's, that's nice. All right, you also have the option of searching by cartridge. So sometimes I like to do this when I want all my die cuts to have a similar look or aesthetic. Oh, that is actually what I'm going to be doing. A lot of my images that I'm using are going to be from the, excuse me, Pagoda cartridge. So I've gone ahead and got that up. And you can see it's part of the Cricut Access. Now before we go into more of this, I'm going to come over here and show you filters. So let's get back to the main images. So over here, filters. You can filter by ownership, by type, or by layers. So if you just want to see the Cricut Access images, or maybe you also want to see the uploaded images, any image that you've uploaded. So you can select the the ownership that you want so that you don't have to pay extra for any of them. You can also pick, let's say, 3D objects. So these are all the 3D objects that you can make. Or maybe you just want to have a border. All right, all of the borders that meet the upload and uploaded and Cricut access criteria are here. Yeah, you just want a single layer. So here we go. These are all of the single layer borders that are Cricut access or uploaded. So it can be fairly easy to find the image that you want. You also can choose whether you want little images or bigger images to look at. All right, so like I said, we are going to be pulling a lot of stuff from the Pagoda cartridge, which I should probably be on that. All right, so there we go. I've opened that up. This is all of the images from the Pagoda cartridge. Now, I've already pulled the page, and I'll show you that at the end. So I'm just going to grab a couple of these characters just so that you can kind of see what I did. And I've got a few picked out, so I just got to find them. There's a lot of images, 350 images on this cartridge, and they're all kind of a more Asian type theme. I'm actually looking for the pagoda right now, and I'm sorry if me scrolling is, you know, kind of giving you a bit of a queasy stomach. It happens. All right, so I've selected the images that I want, and you can, they'll show up here. So right here, these are all the images that I've selected. So if you decide, you know what, I don't really want that one on there anymore, you can click the red X on it, and it'll pop up, or you can go ahead and click on the image again, and that will remove it. Once you're ready, you go ahead and insert image. All right, so here are our images. And notice over here, they're just cut images. They're not print and cut. So how do we go about making these into die cuts? Well, that's pretty easy. So what we're going to want to do, first thing, decide what colors you want everything. So you can go ahead and click on the colors for each layer and you can choose what you want. Now, a lot of the cut images also have a shadow image. When it comes in, it's usually invisible. You want to see it, you go ahead and you um, click on the eyeball and there you can see it again. Now, a lot of times on images with very intricate details like this pagoda here, like I don't necessarily 
want my Cricut to come in and try to cut out every single one of those little squares. It might not work out. So I'm going to pop that shadow image up, but I don't want it to be black. I want it to be white. So this is going to cut out around here. So it's not going to get into all that intricate center detail. Um, this is a good thing to do when you're, you've got anything with little intricate cuts. Your Disney princess, she's got her nice delicate hand and you don't want it to get mangled with the Cricut trying to cut it all out. So you're going to add on the shadow piece and that's just going to cut around it and make a nice little image. All right, so we've got that and that's pretty much good the way it is. You're going to want to make sure that your items are sized to fit within the um, print and cut space which is approximately 9 by 6.25 so that is the cut space that you're going to have so alright that's pretty much what I need it to be this is pretty cool like if I were to go ahead and cut this out it's going to cut right along that black line there it's going to be right up to the edge of whatever your last little bit is last layer is because this is white it's going to show a white border this one would make it look like it's a right up to the edge kind of image I don't want that so I want it to be like that I want the little character to be the main focus I actually have a few of these that have meaning kind of lined up along the edge there alright so let's see let's see this pagoda let's say I want to change the roof let's go ahead and change the roof color and it's as easy as that next thing you can do right now these are still all cut so actually let's go up here to make it so you can kind of see right now it's all cut so here it is separated into all the different colors that you would need and this will cut out your cardstock and then you are going to have to assemble all of these together all right, that's not what we're wanting. We don't want to do that. We want print and cut. So you can come up here, and here is where you can choose your different colors. Um, sometimes, depending on what it is, you can choose a background pattern. But you also have up here where you, you can choose cut, write, score, or print. Now we want print. And when you select print, you do have the option of adding a pattern. Um, patterns work very similarly to your images in how you select them so you go over here to collections and there's different themes and styles artists and cartridges that you can select from you can also filter it out again by ownership by color and go with that so let's say let's see all the Cricut access ones this is especially good when you are doing um, your own planner stickers all right let's say I want this pattern to be here instead of a color so there we go now it's got that pattern on the inside isn't that cute that's pretty adorable now there's some options with patterns you can click this edit button right here and you can change the scale you can change where it is horizontal and vertical you can rotate the image you can flip it horizontal or flip it vertical. Oh, lots of different ways for you to kind of customize that image. So if you want those flowers to be a little bigger, you can do that. So that's, it's nice to have all of these options. I will say though that sometimes working with patterns, it takes a while for everything to kind of process. It's okay. Sometimes you just have to have patience. This is on a server that lots of other people are using. So, you know, also keeping in mind the speed of your computer and the speed of your internet connection. If you are on Wi Fi, you know, you also have to take that into consideration too with the speed of your processing times. All right. So we're starting to get all of that. Now, let me go ahead and we're just going to click print on just those two pieces. Now, let's see what happens. All right, so here we go. Now, you can't see it, but there is also the outline of that 
um, image here. So it's not going to cut the white out because this is two separate images. The white background, the white shadow, and this little character here. Why did it do that? Because we didn't flatten the object. So you've got to remember to select your your character, your image, and come down here to flatten. Now this is going to go ahead and cut all one piece. So you see there it's going to be all one piece that's going to get cut out and it's going to be amazing. We haven't done anything to the pagoda so that's still cutting out onto colored cardstock. So alright we've got our pagoda it's all set up ready to go we've got it selected we're just going to click on flatten that's going to turn all of them into print and cut. Alright the photo we don't need it so we're just going to hide that so we can come right over here to make it and you see there we go it's all set up to run through our printer print and cut and so it'll print in our printer then we take it over to our Cricut hook up your machine to your Cricut um, however you do it whether it's by cable or Bluetooth and you're gonna go ahead and follow the instructions to cut alright so I'm going to go ahead and pull up the project that I made with this. I've already got everything how I want it to be. So let me just show you once it loads up. See how sometimes it can take a little bit for the design space to load, but just have patience. So here we go. Here you can see I've got all of the, the bits and pieces there ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that photo again. Now remember to save your projects a lot. I can't tell you how many times I was working on something for like half an hour, forgot to save the entire time, and then like my computer crashed or something, and I lost all that work. And it's, it's heartbreaking and frustrating. So remember to save like every 5-10 minutes. All right. So this is all set up and ready to go. I've changed the colors on all of my images. I've flattened them all and I'm just going to click on make it. All right, now it's ready to print and cut. Um, you do have some wiggle room on how you want to arrange all of your different pieces. I don't usually bother with it. I just leave them as it is. The Cricut tries to put them together so that it is the best use of space. Um, also keeping in mind that it's got to have room to cut the pieces out. Alright, so you've got this up. This is where you can kind of check, make sure you've got everything okay, and then it's time to go to the next step. So you're going to click on continue. Alright, and now it's print. So this, if you need to edit the mat for any reason, let's say you've got to, um, you're doing an iron on you're going to want to select mirror so that everything comes out facing the right way. If you're not doing an iron on, you don't really have to worry about it. So that's all set. That's done. So we are going to send to printer. Now here is where you can select what printer you want, how many copies you want, whether or not you want it to bleed. Now bleeding, I'm just going to read this, bleed extends the ink slightly beyond the border of the image to eliminate a white margin once the image is cut. So if you're looking to have an image cut right to the edge, that's a good option to select. Generally, I just keep the bleed on. If it's an image that's going to go right up to the edge, it'll go ahead and bleed it out. If I've got the white shadow around it, there's nothing to bleed, so it's all good. If you clicked on advanced options, this is going to open up your printer's dialog box if you need to set up some stuff specifically with your printer. All right, so once you got all of that, you're just going to click on print. Let me just go ahead and pop in some card stuff to my printer. All right, that's already loaded. So I'm going to hit print. It's going to send it to my printer. It's going to print it out. Now, what materials can you use to print on? Wait, that sent it to OneNote. I don't have a OneNote printer. See, I got, got talking. All right, that's the printer that I want. There we go. Now it's going to send it out to my printer. So what can you print on? 
anything that's printable all right you need to have it on white right now you can only print and cut on white the uh, the Cricut will not recognize any other color background so cardstock any kind of tar cardstock you know shiny matte you know glossy um, different weights of cardstock if you can put it through your printer and your Cricut can cut it and the Cricut can cut just about anything then you're good to go you can do uh, printable sticker paper to make your own stickers um, printable vinyl if you need something that's a little bit more durable um, you absolutely have the option so um, the world is open to you oh, alright once everything is printed you're going to see the dialog box here change. It's going to say that you've already sent it to the printer. Now it's time to connect your machine and then you're just going to uh, load it up in your, your Cricut. Make sure you have the material setting to the right one. So I'm on cardstock so I'm going to make sure that it's set to cardstock. And then you're going to click the, push, the flashing C button and it's going to go ahead it's going to read the black outline first so you see the black box that's around it that's the registration mark that's going to give the Cricut an idea of where it needs to cut it's kind of mapping the page and the images so it's going to read that for like a minute and then it's going to start cutting then once it's all cut out you move on to the next mat you you print and you cut and then you have your own die cuts oh all right that is it for today's tutorial i hope this helps you get an understanding of how i go about designing my scrapbook layouts and making my own die cuts i hope this gets you excited to do the same i will have this cut file available if you are a Cricut member, a Cricut Access member, then I'm going to go ahead and put the link in the description bar and you'll be able to click on that and it'll bring you right back to the the file. So that is it for today. Um, until next time, happy scrapping and uh, before you leave, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and if you liked what you saw, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and uh, alright, that's it. Bye!